Russell Haig A and Russell Haig B are a binary star system located in the constellation of Orpheus. The distance between the two stars can vary over time, but the average distance is estimated to be approximately 14 astronomical units. Hi everyone, Vega here, and it's great to be back in the fold again after our spring hiatus, and I'm delighted to return to our brightest star series with a look at a largely unknown star system that lies some 49 light years from our Earth, Racel Haig. So, let's get to it. First things first, the star has quite a strange name, and it's my understanding that the star is pronounced Racel Haig, although what regular viewers of the channel will know that we've had a few interesting conversations as to the differences between American English and English English pronunciation of star names. While thinking about what topic to do a new video on, I went back through the usual suspects, Sirius, Arcturus, Betelgeuse and company, but felt perhaps it was time we look at a star system that is actually one of the most important in our local area. We know that Sirius is the brightest star other than the sun in our skies, but when we look at a list of stars ordered by absolute magnitude that lie within 50 light years, we see an unexpected name pop out of the list. For reference, absolute magnitude is the intrinsic brightness of a celestial object. It measures the object's luminosity, unaffected by distance, and represents the object's brightness as if it were 10 parsecs, or some 32.6 light years away. Basically, what this list shows, therefore, is the most luminous stars within 50 light years. Interesting, isn't it? And we see at the top of the list Capella, followed unsurprisingly by Arcturus and Vega. Then a strange name appears at number 6, Racel Haig. Racel Haig A, designated as Alpha Orphiuchi, takes centre stage as the primary star in the system. It's classified as a spectral type of A53, a white subgiant star. Racel Haig A's luminosity is significantly greater than that of our Sun, and slightly more luminous than our more famous neighbourhood star of Sirius. This system isn't just impressive for Racel Haig A though. I hope it whets your celestial appetite to learn that Racel Haig B is classified with a spectral type of K55, a main sequence star, which is something similar to Tolyman, also known of course as Alpha Centauri B. We see here in this graphic the relative sizes of our Sun the Alpha Centauri stars and Sirius, compared to Racel Haig. Racel Haig A we see has a mass of around 2.4 solar masses, with a radius of 2.6, so it is substantially larger than our Sun, and indeed Sirius. Racel Haig B's mass is known to be around 0.85 solar masses, but its radius is only estimated at approximately 0.8 solar masses, so it's an all around smaller star than our Sun. Inside the constellation of Ophiuchus, Alpha, or Racel Haig, is positioned near the head of the constellation. If we imagine Ophiuchus as a stick figure, Racel Haig would be situated at the head end of the figure, and it is one of the brightest stars in the constellation and can easily be identified by its bluish white colour. Racel Haig B's classification, of course, suggests that it has a lower luminosity than our Sun, but Racel Haig B still shines brightly enough. The intriguing thing about the system is that at 14 astronomical units apart, neither star is really close enough to each other to completely rule out habitable planets, and this is particularly applicable to Racel Haig B. As already mentioned, we are however not fully sure of Racel Haig B's vital statistics, and estimates might assume around 0.5 solar luminosities. Here we see a graphic of the Alpha Ophiuchi system, and its approximate safe zone in the middle. If we take the habitable zones for these two stars, unsurprisingly, Racel Haig A is quite a wide zone beginning at around 3.7 astronomical units and drifts out to as far as 8.8, .8, which is roughly the orbit of Saturn in our own system. This does ask intriguing questions, and Racel Haig B is obviously a much dimmer and less powerful star, so its own habitable zone begins at just 0.5 astronomical units and stretches out to around 1.2, which leaves a small area in between the two where the system would have frozen worlds that could be something like Uranus or Neptune, but it would seem gravitational permutations between the two stars probably rules out that existence of any planets in this area. One would expect then that the chances for life to evolve in the system are remote, and we must also take into account that the lifespan of Racel Haig A is short and it will soon enough evolve off the main sequence, swelling to become a red giant, which would preclude life, and in particular intelligent life even probably surrounding Racel Haig B, taking a foothold. The red giant star Racel Haig A would soon enough stretch the habitable zone out beyond that 14 astronomical units that currently separates the two stars. So again, for any life around the more stable Racel Haig B, 
while their own house, so to speak, would survive. This red giant fire would unfortunately engulf it, having spread from the bigger house across the street. In our first graphic today, we imagine what we might see if the race or Hague stars were 14 astronomical units, somewhere in between the orbits of Saturn and Uranus, from our own Sun. The reason I choose this distance is it's because the actual distance between the race or Hague stars themselves. First we see Racel Hague B appearing, shining at minus 20.35, which is of course much dimmer than our sun would be from the same distance, but it'd still be bright enough to light our Earth to a certain extent and easily enough to read by. Next appears the more dominant Racel Hague A, which shining at minus 24.61 is roughly the brightness of our sun at the asteroid belt now. As it's somewhat difficult to depict brightnesses on a computer screen, you might imagine the star being actually visually damaging to look at, but the disk would be significantly smaller than probably depicted here. We now also see the Sun appears, which at one astronomical unit of course is 14 times closer than the pairing. Unsurprisingly it lights up our Earth as a new day begins. You might agree with me that the racial Hague system is almost as if the Sirius and Alpha Centauri systems had exchanged stars, and left us with an almost replica of Sirius A and Alpha Centauri B. What would have happened of course to Rigel Centaurus and Sirius B of course is anyone's guess. The classification of the two stars as A and K, along with their distance of 49 light years, has led me to the conclusion they should be known as the AK-49 system. Apologies to you folks who thought there might be some deeper weapon related meaning to it. The AK-49 weapon apparently is a modified version of its more famous AK-47 relative. In our final graphic today, we imagine what we might see if our sun were replaced by the race or Hague stars from the vantage point of our Earth, this time of course at one astronomical unit rather than 14. We see the sun shining above a lake, and then race or Hague B appears, shining at roughly half the brightness of our sun, at minus 26.04 apparent magnitudes, and it also has a visibly smaller disk. Our sun itself shines at minus 26.74, but both stars are soon dwarfed by the A-class Racel Hague A star, which now dominates the Earth's fragile sky, shining at a scorching minus 30.3 apparent magnitudes. Of course, in this scenario, the Earth would warm up to the extent that human life would cease to be able to exist. Oceans would slowly boil and our Earth would turn into a Venus-like hell world. Racel Hague A and B form a captivating binary star system in the constellation of Ophiuchus. This white subgiant and K5 main sequence star are the sixth most luminous star in our local area and would outshine Sirius if they were nearby. The two stars on their own would not preclude the possibility of life evolving around them, and in particular Racel Hague B, but the fact that they hang around together means that when the larger of the two leaves the main sequence, any surviving life will likely be extinguished. An unusual combination of an A and K class star, Racel Hague will continue to shine brightly in our skies for many years to come. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so and if you'd like any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, let me know in the comments below and perhaps next week your idea could show up. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.